Hey, this is Phil with Filmora and the YouTube marketing series. In this video, we're learning about how to use analytics to grow your channel. Let's dive into the back end of the analytics and I'm going to walk through my own analytics and how I use them to grow my channel. First, let's start out with the key stats. So we're here in the Creator Studio under Analytics and right under the, in the top menu is Overview. So these are the key analytics we're going to be looking at. We have our watch time, we have our average view duration, we have our views, estimated revenue, and beneath that we have our likes, dislikes, comments, shares, videos and playlists, subscribers, and then below that we have our top videos which includes the watch time, the total views, your estimated revenue from those, and an ad revenue, and then your YouTube Red revenue. But YouTube Red is a subscription plan that you can actually pay to watch YouTube videos without ads. So some people are watching my videos through YouTube Red, and I get a little bit of money from that. You can also see some basic overview of where people are watching, who your audience is, male versus female. You can see that I have a heavily male-dominated audience your traffic sources, where your traffic is coming from, and your playback location. Where are they watching it? Are they watching on the YouTube page? Are they watching it on your channel and on other websites? We're gonna dive into some of those other ones later on, but the key ones that you wanna think about are your watch time, your views, and then just in general, likes versus dislikes, how many shares you're getting, and your subscribers, and also estimated revenue. And just seeing, is there growth? Right now I'm viewing just in the last 30 days and you can't really see much growth in the last 30 days but if I expand this to say this quarter I can see that there is growth both in watch time and in views and average view duration which is good because view duration is so important because the longer people are watching your videos the more that YouTube will push people to your videos with search results, with suggested videos, etc. If we expand this even further, so let's say this year, we'll see even more of a longer term trend. And as long as this is going up, you are good. You can see that in the beginning for views, I was getting around a few thousand per month. Now I'm getting anywhere between five to 9,000 per month uh, in terms of views. And then the watch time, the total minutes of my videos being watched that's increasing as well. I can also see my most popular videos and how much they've made. This is a good high level approach to seeing what videos of yours are doing best. You can see that my top 10 ways to earn passive income, my how to retire early and my what is the 4% rule are my three top videos. They're not only the most popular but they're also the ones that bring in the most revenue. So this is a good indication of, well, if I want to just make more revenue with my channel, focus on the personal finance side of the videos. We can dive in deeper to some cool options and analytics like real time. This allows us to see who is watching our videos right now in the last 48 hours, in the last 60 minutes. If people have been watching our videos for specific videos, when was the last time someone viewed it? The next key stat is watch time. This used to be views and it's interesting because people are so concerned with how many people have watched your video, but what's more important is how long they have watched your video. Down here, I could dive a little bit deeper and see the average view duration of the video, which is good to see. Okay, so this video is the only one that's getting more than 10 minutes on average, but that's because this is an hour long video. So it, the average percentage is probably similar to these other videos. We can dive into audience retention to see more about that, to see what percentage of a particular video is viewed. So right here, the top 10 ways to earn passive income, 45% percentage viewed. What does this mean? Does this mean halfway through the video, it gets less interesting? Is there something that I said or did that made people click away? This is something to look into. And then I could see which videos people are watching the most of. 
my how to retire early, my what is the 4% rule. I'm getting over 50, 60%, which is really good on YouTube. And that's because I put more time into those videos. I animated them. It's a cool motion graphic versus some of these other videos where it's just me talking uh, on camera that might not be as interesting to people. So seeing that and how the quality of your video contributes to watch time is important for your own videos. Next, let's learn about who is watching our channel and why this is so important. To find out who is watching our channel, let's check out the demographics and playback locations. With the demographics, we can see the percentage of male versus female and the age range. My biggest age range is 25 to 34 year old males. I can even see this based off of specific videos. So let's just click the video tab and it's going to show me all these specific videos, who is watching them. And if I click on any video, it gives me more information about this specific video. Um, so I can see the breakdown of the age here in the graph and down below. And that's just within the last 30 days, you can search for a different time frame or even specific locations, such as if you just wanna see who in Europe is watching my video or even specific countries. And we can even dive further by going down here and saying geography to see which countries are watching my videos the most. Since I'm speaking English and coming from the US, a lot of views are coming from the US, then India, UK, Canada, Australia, a lot of people in the Philippines speak English as well. So that's obvious that these are the most popular channels, but who knew that my videos were semi-popular in Indonesia or Germany or Malaysia or even the Netherlands. So this means that you can actually connect with your audience in a different way. So using your analytics to see if I have a big Australian audience, maybe calling out that Australian audience or the German audience or the Malaysian audience. This is something you can do to connect with your video viewers. Next, let's look at playback locations. So if I click this and I'm on my last 30 days, I can see most people are watching on the YouTube page itself. I can also click embedded in external websites to see what websites have embedded my videos. Videoschoolonline.com obviously is a big one. That's my website. I embed my videos on my blog, but Yahoo Search, Pro Video Coalition, I don't even know what they are, but these are people that you can also reach out to if they have shared your videos in the past to give them more videos in the future and see if they'll share them. Okay, now we know who is watching our videos and let's now see how engaged are they. The biggest number to think about is subscribers. Are people subscribing to your videos? If you click on the subscriber tab, a couple key things to look at. Channel, video, recommended channel. So with channel, this means that people are subscribing to your channel when they go to your channel page. With video, this means that they're subscribing or watching a video itself. So a lot of people are subscribing to my channel when they actually just go straight to my channel page, which is good to know that a lot of people are doing that, meaning that I sh should make my channel look amazing and have a great channel trailer that pops up for new visitors. With likes and dislikes, we can see all of our likes versus dislikes for all of our videos. We can also see on the right hand side, the percentage of likes versus dislikes, or at least a graph that helps us see. So for this video right here, choose the right sequence settings in Adobe Premiere Pro, I'm getting relatively more dislikes compared to my other videos. So something's wrong in that video, maybe I need to update it, maybe I need an annotation or something that clarifies something to make sure people are liking that video or maybe I just need to create a completely new video to replace that one. The videos in playlists tab will show you which videos are being viewed in different playlists. You can see your videos being added to other playlists because that's the cool thing is that when you're creating playlists, you're not just creating playlists of your own videos, but you can actually add other people's videos to your playlist, meaning that other people can add your videos to their playlist. And that happens a lot with my videos. Uh, so this is a cool stat to keep track of as well. Comments, just seeing which videos have the most comments, which ones are driving the most interaction. Um, this 
top 10 ways to earn passive income. That's just my big standout video. You get those once in a while. They just get the most views, the most comments, the most engagement, but it's something to look at and see, okay, well, if that video is getting a lot of commenting, what did I do in that video to create that engagement and how can I replicate that? Sharing will show you the videos that are getting shared the most. Sometimes this correlates just with the videos that are the most popular. Other times it will show you some videos that aren't as popular, but are getting shared more. So again, seeing what did you do in that video to get it to be shared or if it's a specific topic. Annotations and cards. So annotations we didn't talk about much in this course because I feel like it's a little bit outdated. Cards are the replacement for annotations and I don't foresee them actually getting rid of annotations. It's not something that I'm promoting people using, but they're similar to cards. It's a way to have people engage with the video itself. So these two tabs are just a great place to see which cards are working, which ones are getting clicked, when are they getting clicked in your videos? What percentage of the cards are actually being clicked versus just the teaser itself? Uh, so this will allow you to know, okay, what text is working, what teaser text is working, what description is working, what image is working for your cards. So we know who is watching our video. We know how they're watching our video or how engaged they are. Let's see how they're finding our videos. This is so important because it's going to help you decide and improve your YouTube SEO and what types of videos you're making and where you are promoting your videos. To see how people are finding your videos, just go to this traffic sources tab. Here I can see that people are finding my videos based off of suggested videos. And if you click on these, it explains what this means. These are views where YouTube suggests my videos alongside another video. A lot are coming from YouTube search, a lot are coming from external views. And if you click on these, it dives deeper into these. So we can see that Google search, a lot of video of my views are coming when people are searching on Google itself and not just on YouTube. Video school online, on Facebook, on these other websites direct or unknown. This is when people go directly to your link. Maybe this is something where I've sent out a URL in an email and I'm asking people to, to watch playlists uh, from you video cards or annotation or even from YouTube advertising. The suggested videos is an interesting tab to look at. This is, these are the videos that people are watching that your video appears on. So seeing that, my own videos like the how to retire early or the what is the 4% rule is driving people to my other videos is a good thing to realize. Other people's videos also show up here. The rules of baseball explain this is not my video, but my video about baseball shows up with this video. Top 10 best ways to save money, not my video, but my videos show up with those others on that person's suggested videos. So you can see that a lot of my videos that have the most views and watch time are ones related to personal finance. Again, this is, this is a red flag, not a red flag, a good red flag showing me this is what you should be focusing on with your channel. Now we know about our videos and we have a lot of data to use to improve our video content. Next, let's learn about money and how we make money on YouTube. When you look at your revenue page, you can see your estimated revenue for the time frame that you're in. You can see your ad revenue versus your YouTube red revenue. YouTube red is the subscription service where people can pay to watch videos without ads. And so someone, when people are watching your videos who have that YouTube red, you get some money from it. Growth is always a good thing to know. You can change the graph itself to see it in a different way. You can also extend it to a custom time period by extending this down here, which will also change these numbers up here if you want to chain, type in a custom range or just use one of these preset ranges up here. Down below, you can see which videos of yours have earned the most money. This is important. If your goal is to make more money on YouTube, then you should focus on which videos are making the most money. And this doesn't necessarily correlate exactly with which videos are getting the most views. 
a lot of times it goes hand in hand uh, but sometimes some of my videos make more money than others even though they're not as popular and that's just because that video is more valuable to an advertiser or for some reason that audience is clicking on the ads more often than the other videos one thing that's a little scary for me is that my top three videos comprise about 40 to 50 percent of my average revenue per month so if those videos for some reason stop being watched if people stop liking them if they stop showing up in the search results then my youtube revenue is going to decrease so i have to be careful of putting all my eggs in one basket to use that metaphor i want to spread out my wealth just like with all of my streams of income i want to spread out my my income and it's the same with youtube so creating videos similar to this is a good idea so that hopefully i can spread out the percentage of income from these specific videos if we go to YouTube ad revenue, this is another page you can check out to see all of the ad revenue earned from your videos. This is not your revenue because part of it goes back to YouTube. And you can also see the countries where this ad revenue comes from. Most from the US, Canada, UK, Australia. Even though I have more views in places like the Philippines, a lot of the ad revenue comes from other countries like Germany or South Africa or even Brazil. So that's just an interesting thing to see, um, to, to note that some places are more valuable to advertisers than others, um, just because they probably have more disposable income and they're spending more money, they're clicking on more ads uh, than the other countries. So the key thing with your revenue reports is to just see which videos are making the most money and to create more content like that. Thanks for watching this video on YouTube analytics. I hope it has really helped you and sparked some ideas about how to use the tool of analytics that YouTube provides to us to improve our own channel. In the next video, we're going to be looking at how to use playlists to drive more viewer engagement.